conspiracy of power. It is a conspiracy to take down national sovereignty and replace it with a global government. And I try to give credible evidence of what's going on there. It does not mean you don't love this country. Absolutely. You know, I'm a former military officer, a Marine pilot in the Vietnam era, and, uh, uh, you know, I've served my country. But frankly, I saw a lot of yesmanship in the military officer corps when I was in there. And that's one of the reasons I'm not in the military today, uh, because, frankly, there's just an awful lot of, of uh, hierarchical uh, coming down the pike. You will do what you know, you're told to do, and you won't object, even though you're wasting millions of dollars. Uh, anybody who gets to a high-ranking officer uh, in the United States military has to compromise considerably his principles to get there. And I've got the you know, personal experience to know that that's true. All right. Uh, Turkey recently shot down a Russian uh, jet. Uh, two soldiers, uh, one soldier died, one uh, pilot died. The other was, I think, viciously shot down while he was parachuting. First of all, your take on the shootdown, Russia claims they were not in Turkey's airspace. Turkey claims they warned the Russian jet ten times. Who do you believe? Well, there's something wrong with the Turkish side of events. First of all, the small, tiny, arrow tip portion of the Syrian border or uh, Turkish Syrian border there is only two miles wide. It takes approximately six to nine seconds to cross that area, even if you did intrude. Uh, Recep Erdogan, Erdogan had said even two years ago that minor border incursions don't merit a military response, and yet he went against that. He did. And, you know, how do you warn for 10 minutes when there's a nine-second violation? I mean, it either means you were waiting in ambush and just going through the motions of making a, a declaration on guard frequency, uh, which all aircraft uh, have, uh, and then you, you shoot someone down. But, frankly... Uh, my belief is, as a military pilot, that the U.S. instigated this with Turkey for a very, very specific reason. We have to remember that during Operation Desert Storm and in Enduring Freedom, the Russians let Iraq fall, even though they were had a pact to defend it, because they figured that they could learn more by letting it fall and eavesdrop on U.S. military frequencies, electronic jamming that the U.S. aircraft use every time they go in for a bombing run. And the Russians have been devising countermeasures to our counter uh, ECM, or electronic countermeasures, for years and developing high-tech uh, anti-aircraft missile systems like the S-400. And the U.S. has zero intelligence on what those frequencies are, what type of jamming they're using. And I think very strongly they said, all right, we'll protect you, Turkey. You take out a Russian jet. This will force them to bring in their top-of-the-line stuff, which they haven't been doing so far. I mean, they hadn't even been using fighter escorts for these uh, aircraft. Uh, they hadn't been using AWACS. They hadn't been using all of the stuff they've been developing. And now they are. The U.S. has forced them by doing this into bringing in the S-400, ECM jamming your aircraft, air-to-air -air missiles. And you can bet the U.S. will be eavesdropping on every time they turn on their radar, every time they turn on their electronic jamming and figure out exactly what the Russians have. All right, so... When the, do you think the United States was basically told the Turks, shoot down any Russian fighter? No, not at all. All they needed to do was shoot down one in order to force the Russians to defend their airspace. And, and that's, I think, what's going to happen. You know, Russia, and this is one of the things, I've, I've opposed the hype on the internet that says this is going to lead to imminent World War III. Putin made it very, very clear, we're not going to war over the downing of one aircraft. And he means it, because... Neither Russia and China, who are building massive weapons of mass destruction heading for a nuclear confrontation with the West at some point, are not even close to being ready. Their top-of-the-line weapon systems aren't coming on board until 2020, 21, 22, 23, 24. So I can't imagine them being suckered into going to war too early when they haven't really built up. I mean, China and Russia need to rebuild the Blue Water Navy. It takes a Blue Water Navy to run a world war. So they're not foolish, uh, but they are calling the U.S. bluff. The U.S., what I call, is involved in this phony war on terror, of ginning up terror so that they can justify intervening in other countries, justify taking away American liberties, justify NSA spying. War on terror just keeps this going, and they, uh, they're doing this, uh, and, and it, to a certain extent, it sets up the, the U.S. for a war. Uh, world war because we're getting the reputation of being the bully of the world around the world. I mean, people hate us.
us and our freedoms. They hate our U.S. intervention. And Russia and China eventually will take advantage of that, taking down the bully of the world, I believe, with the nuclear preemptive strike that they're preparing. But it's, it's, a, it's a ways off.